All right, here we are in week four. I've got my schedule set out again. He volunteers every day. Um, only one lab this week. What's going on? Oh my, the hearts. And he's still a very kind and considerate person, even if he lacks confidence. I got a heart, whole heart with Hendrik, and part of a heart with Joan. And DeAndre and Kyler, our old booze, don't care at all. Okay, stats, that's what I'm looking for. And let's see what happens this week. Oh, we're off to a great start. Excellent. Yeah, go girl! Oh, well, Monday's gone. Woo! We succeeded. Leveling everything to the 25 centimeter mark is tedious. I was surrounded by four buckets, each dedicated to a different layer. When I reached the bottom, I learned that my square sloped like a steep slide. It had to be perfectly vertical. There were a few inches. Ugh, metric, think metric. Centimeters I had to scrape off, but there was still the possibility I would find more bone or flint while smoothing it over. Kyler was absent, doing laboratory work, leaving me in a solitary hole. Oh no, am I going to be yelled at by Augustan for the first time? Through my low music, I heard footsteps coming down the ladder. I paused my song as I turned around to greet the person. Oops, yep, mm-hmm. Augustan clutched a document that looked vaguely familiar, and I realized it had my writing on it. My stomach plunged, but I forced a hopeful grin as I removed my earbuds and stood up. Hello, Augustan. Melissa. He handed me the fiche, and I nervously glanced over it, wondering what was wrong. I noticed that in your most recent reports, you do not sketch the findings in the grid provided at the bottom. I flipped it over, and he tapped the last page, which were devoid of any pencil marks. Oh. I scrambled to formulate a reason for neglecting that last part. I originally didn't bother sketching in the smaller objects, and I guess it became a habit. Well, everything already gets recorded in the nature list, so I didn't draw its position, too. He shook his head, severely disappointed by my logic. I sidestepped to allow him to approach my square, and he picked up the bigger trowel from my usual tool set. Again and again, I have stressed that cortex is important in microstratigraphy. Not just the X and Y coordinates, not just the delta, but also how it was positioned when you found it. The provenience is essential to understanding how this find got to where it is now. Do you know what period you're working on? Uh, roughly 120,000 years ago, give or take a few thousand. And is this during a warm or cool period? I don't know. It's the end of a warm period, thus its climate is changing. It is extremely important to record cortex in these layers due to the climate change. Moreover, it has been proven the Atherthals have occupied this cave, as the remains have been found in these sediments. Most of these findings have been recovered in a secondary cortex, that is, they were moved from their original position due to external elements such as fluvial processes, rock falls, animals, or ice. We need to know what position the finding was in to determine how it was brought here, or if it is in situ. If a bone is vertical, it is possible it was moved by cryotubulation, with ice wedging underneath it, little by little every year, until it has moved to its new context. Or maybe it was deliberately buried by a Neanderthal. But how will we know if you do not record this? Uh. His tone was level, but very strict. And with every sentence, I felt more and more careless about my excavation. I could only nod as he continued. Here we believe the cave was opened up during the warm period. Possibly due to collapse, but we don't know. Caves usually have a stabilized environment until something happens. Such as rock falls or a river cutting through the limestone. It is now subject to more drastic turmoil, and we need to know that those changes were, and how they impacted this cave. Augustan continued, using his trowel to pretend to find various bones or flint. I did my best to follow along, but my mind was a whirlwind of disappointment. I had thought I carried out the procedures to a T. Why didn't Kyler point it out? No, it wasn't his fault. If anything, I should have been more aware. Maybe Sherry would know. Archaeology destroys. 
You have one chance to accurately record the position. Then it is gone forever, and you are no better than a collector who does not respect the significance of context. Therefore, please outline how they were found. Its provenience is extremely vital. Right, you got it, Augustan. I'm really sorry. I will return this document to the lab, but I want all future reports to be filed in completely. Once he was gone, I tossed my trowel into one of the buckets and grabbed my journal. I had a feeling I needed to write down everything I was lectured on before I forgot. Ugh, doesn't help us later though, oh no. Oh, we're already failing after that talk. Oh no! We need a pep talk soon! Phew. Or a cooperative carrot. Oh! Well, this evening is more festive than usual. There was a party here every night, but this is one of the liveliest I've seen yet. This is the last week for most of the students here. That's why they're all celebrating. What's let's party in French? Faire la fête. Or you could simply say, celebron. Isn't faire a verb for make? Make, do, act. Basically, you're saying, make the party? That sounds more engaging than let's party. In English, we should say, let's make party from now on. You dig? It's... interesting. I don't think it's going to catch on, though. Watch me. It'll spread like a catchphrase in mockets. My eyes wandered over to the dancing, which was pitiful in my eyes. There were a few casual participants, some with a beer in hand. I had a feeling if no one else joined, it would dissolve like sugar and tea. A shame. I hated seeing an empty dance floor. I spotted Chantel and Joan chatting away and decided to join them. Later, DeAndre. Cheers. Something up? Here to say hi? Hi. Hey, Joan. And Chantel, you could say that. I was waiting for the right time to dance. You should grab a partner and encourage more people to join in. True. Even if club music was not my thing, at least I get my feet moving. Who should I ask? Would Shoji say yes if I asked? I don't know. In the back of my mind, I knew this would be a futile attempt, but it couldn't hurt to try. After checking the back room, I navigated to the tent area. The tent beside mine was all zipped up. Did Shoji retire to bed already? Crouching by the entrance, I poked at the fabric, causing the zippers to jingle and the tent to quiver. Shoji? Are you asleep? Huh? Oh, give me a second. I could hear something snapping and the mattress rustling before he unzipped the tent. As the flap fell, Shoji's eyes met mine and I gave him a cordial smile. Beside him was a closed e-book in a green cover. Reading? Yes. What you reading? Is it a good book? Um, I just started the first chapter, but it's about the history of the radio. Right now it's focusing on the 1860s when James Clerk Maxwell wrote equations regarding... Uh, sorry, you probably don't find it interesting. And I'm sure that's not why you came here. <laughs> Shoji was super quiet until someone directed him to a subject he loved. Leaning in, I placed my hands on my knees. I didn't mind. I actually came here asking if you'd like to dance with me. Uh, uh, me? Of course. I wouldn't have asked you if I didn't want to. Uh. Trailing off, he became silent, and I thought he was contemplating my request. After a few moments, he grabbed the e-book and rested it on his lap. He was panicking, but trying not to show it. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry I sprung this on you. No, it's not your fault. I appreciate it, even if I didn't expect it. Uh, I'm sorry for not accepting. Was my approach that intimidating? I felt whenever I tried to reach out to him, I would misstep in the process. Was it something cultural or just a personality's? We really have to stop apologizing to each other constantly. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> huh. He glanced down and fiddled with the e-book's elastic band. I hope I didn't hurt your feelings in any way. If it helps, I'm not sad or angry or disappointed. I asked, you declined, no harm done, Shoji. However, if you ever decide to ask me to dance, I'll always say yes, just in case you change your mind in the future. Is that a good enough notice? <laughs> yes, thank you. 
Again, sorry. Uh. <laughs> the slip caused me to laugh and I stood up. I'll talk to you later, Shoji. Enjoy the book. I bit my tongue to avoid apologizing for disturbing him. Darn, that was a tricky restriction. I briskly walked back to Chantel and Joan. <laughs> Darn. He was a lot nicer about it than Kyler. Weren't able to find anyone? I tried asking Shoji, but it didn't end well. I figured as much, but I thought it'd still be worth a shot. <laughs> the short one? The short one? Yeah, I can imagine. I'm lucky enough to get a high out of him, or even a nod when I pass him. Reminds me of Joan in high school. <laughs> hmm, I was not. I am not short, and I was not quiet. As soon as her name was mentioned, Joan fearfully darted her eyes between us, trying to decide if we were mocking or complimenting her. <laughs> Chantel translated to pacify her, and Joan frowned. Never that bad. Not that shy. I will show you. Joan grabbed both my hand and Chantel's and tugged us toward the dance floor. Let's go. You're so pushy. It'll be fun, at least. Once the three of us migrated to an open spot, the song was replaced by a more upbeat one that encouraged jumping and pumping your fists. The energy was great, even if the dance style wasn't my forte, and more people joined in. I didn't know the lyrics. Any talking over the loud music was easily lost, but I followed the rhythm, taking cues from the others. I even mimicked some of the dance moves I saw, while Joan and Chantel tried some of the advanced sequences that I had picked up from my own clubbing experience. Once the party reached its conclusion, the music stopped and people trickled back to the tent area, me included. I really had a good time. It felt like forever since I've last danced with friends. Is anyone ever going to take us up on our first dance offer again, or is DeAndre like literally the only one who was brave enough. Because goodness. Oh, music continuing from the uh, weekly stuff. Oh hey, this is DeAndre's report. Rummaging through the plastic container, I spotted his name in scratchy handwriting. Curious, I pulled it out and set it on the table by my workstation. I opened the document to read the findings list. Number one, OS. Number two, OS. Number three, OS. Number four, OS. The whole document just says bone. Some even have a question mark. Ah, uh, gosh, I can't remember who this was. Hendrik, il y a un problème. Oh, it was Joan. I jolted at the word problem. Joan was on the verge of tears and she struggled to remain calm. Oh, is this the cave in? Quoi? Que ce qui ne va pas? Kyla is bliss. Hendrik's face hardened, and he quickly glanced at the museum where Augustan disappeared into momentarily. Students gasped and started asking questions. However, Hendrik ordered them to calm down, then departed with Joan. This music is so inappropriate for what's happening. It sounds bad. Was there an accident? I hovered by the table, wondering if I should join them. It involved my square mate, but Hendrik did say to stay put. After what felt like forever, I saw Sherry and Kyler hurry toward the museum. Kyler grasped his upper arm, and I thought I saw a flash of bright red under his bangs. K kyler I stood up to approach them, but Sherry shook her head disapprovingly, and I slumped back into my seat. I guess they needed some privacy. Once another eternity passed, I impatiently made a beeline for the museum. My boldness faltered, and I timidly peered into the laboratory, since its door was ajar. Hello? Can I come in? You may. I pushed open the door and entered. Sherry closed the first aid kit before returning to me. What happened? Oh. Kyler seethed quietly and stared at the floor. One of the heat lamps on the catwalk fell over and crashed where you and Kyler dig. Kyler was fortunate. The st stand grazed him after it hit the ground. W what Kyler, how are your injuries? I'm fine. I only have a bruise on my arm when I shielded myself, and a small cut from the end of the stand. He flicked his bangs, briefly revealing the butterfly bandage before combing his hair over again. Still, it was a close call. If you were a few feet closer, I would have been performing an autopsy instead of first aid. Considering that's your specialty, it would have been the perfect teaching opportunity. True. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they burst out laughing, and I rubbed my forehead in disbelief. They both have a weird sense of humor. 
I'm glad you didn't excavate today, Melissa. Hendrick's cleaning up the mess as we speak, since we don't want glass surrounding your workplace. Augustan was furious. Yikes, I can imagine. Did the heat lamp just... tip over on its own? Was it already unstable? No, DeAndre bumped into it on the catwalk and nearly fell over, too. If Chantel and Shoji hadn't... He abruptly stopped himself and stood up, ignoring Sherry's low objection. I need to talk to Shoji. Thank you for everything, Sherry. I'll be fine. Take it easy. I'm glad the stand didn't strike your head, but please let me know if you experience any dizziness. He answered with a short nod and exited the lab. I guess that's it. Can I help with anything? No, it's all over now. You can return to your lab work. Right. I hope things don't sour between DeAndre and Kyler again. I fiddled with the bowl while I waited in the lunch line, listening to the conversation and laughter surrounding me. DeAndre was already retelling the incident, complete with comical gestures to a small group. It amazed me how fast people moved on, although I knew it would be a while before Kyler forgave DeAndre. Scanning the crowd, I felt someone was missing. Sherry was talking to Augustan. Chantal left to recharge her phone. Wait, where was Shoji? Oh, we noticed because we, he's our boo. Kyler mentioned Shoji back in the lab. Was he involved in the incident somehow? The realization made my eyes dart around frantically. As I stepped closer to the soup pot, there was no sign of him. After a split second of regret, I stepped out of the line and placed my bowl on the table. For all I knew, Shoji was simply in the washroom, but it wouldn't hurt to check up on him. He would be more distraught over the event than others might think. I headed for the tent area. Since it was a sunny day, anyone relaxing in their tent would leave the flaps open to avoid it getting stuffy. Spra <clears throat> Excuse me. Sprawled on the sleeping bag, Shoji gripped his 3DP and lazily tapped the buttons. When I appeared in his line of vision, his eyes darted to me, deeply startled. He rolled over while I knelt down and he dropped the hand held onto the air mattress. M Melissa, I'm really sorry for what happened earlier. I didn't mean to ruin your square. Huh? Oh no, don't apologize. I wasn't going to demand something like that. Then... Um... Well, I didn't see you at the lunch area and I was worried about you. I wanted to see if you were okay. Shoji pushed his hair back before he adjusted his glasses. Oh. His posture relaxed. Phew. I thought you'd be upset with me once you heard the news. Why would I be upset? I'm sure you did nothing wrong, Shoji. DeAndre was the one who bumped into the heat lamp, right? But I asked DeAndre to move. I should have waited. It's not as if I urgently needed to wet screen. And Kyler got hurt on top of it. He told me it wasn't serious, but still. I thought I was getting better at speaking to people. And then this happens. Now everyone will know me as the guy who caused the incident. It was embarrassing. You may think it's not my fault, but I can't help but worry how others will see me from now on. Don't say he's overreacting. We'll just reassure him. I shook my head, wondering how he jumped to an absurd conclusion. Kyler was grateful to you. He was more worried about you than his own injuries. I promise no one thinks it's your fault. I don't know all the details, but it sounded like an unfortunate accident. That's all. You're right. Um, thank you for checking up on me. I constantly blamed myself all morning and the guilt ate away at me. I usually keep a low profile, and I'm far from conspicuous. Situations like this trip me up bad. I found it mortifying. Have you ever experienced an embarrassing situation? <laughs> Who hasn't? Me? Of course, all the time. I'm pretty outgoing, which means more opportunities to make a fool out of myself. Mike. Oh, his, his lips are all trembly. Oh boy, where to even start? I knew Shoji hoped to find stories to relate to. Nothing comes to mind. Oh, come on. There was the one time you face planted during a swing competition. I've got a doozy for you. Promise you'll keep it between us. He perked up and nodded eagerly. After placing my elbow on my knee, I rested my chin in my hand. Let's see. 
I was at the swing camp, and there was a junior Jack and there was a junior Jack and Jill competition. What's that? It means dance partners are randomly selected. It's to test our ability to improvise and read our partner. No fancy moves are allowed. Anyway, I was paired up with this guy, and things were going well. We were dancing in front of the judges. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. I think we read each other's direction wrong. Anyway, I tripped over his leg during the sleep and landed face first, breaking my nose. Ooh, ouch. I insisted that I can continue, but everyone freaked out and said I couldn't dance with a bloody nose. Needless to say, we didn't win. That took place in front of the judges? And about a few dozen people. What can I say? I've had my share of slip-ups too. I learned that people don't think about you as often as you believe. The most embarrassing event to you will just be someone's moment of amusement or highlight of the day. Poor guy, though. He felt terrible about the whole thing and even stayed by my side during the ride to the hospital, apologizing endlessly. Ah, that must have been awkward for him, too. What happened after? What else? We started dating. I wondered if it was going to be that the guy that she dated. <laughs> what else was there about to date? You... He trailed off as a chuckle escaped his lips, then started laughing and shook his head. <laughs> Whatever anxiety he harbored melted away. <laughs> I never expected that. Surprise, that's life for you. Even good things can come out of moments where I wished I could crawl under a rug. The only reminder is that my nose upturned after the surgery. People don't usually notice unless I point it out, though. Feel better? I'm not even sure what I'm doing anymore. Cheering you up, I guess? You are, and you have. I'll... Try not to dwell on the cave accident so much. Believe me, people moved on pretty quickly. DeAndre's already laughing about it. Only Kyler's being a sourpuss. Then again, when is he not? I'm lucky if I can carry on a natural conversation with him. <laughs> Shoji patted the handheld next to him. I've... Talked to Kyler sometimes. He likes to read, and his tent is opposite of mine. You have? What about? Sometimes he asks what I'm reading or playing, and vice versa. Conversation is slow. We might say something every 15 minutes. Just to comment or laugh at a scene we enjoyed. I like it. There's no pressure to keep talking, nor uncomfortable silence. Huh, that's a sight to Kyler I did not imagine. Anyway, I'm famished. I stood up and casually wiped my pants. If you want, I can save you a seat if you plan to eat later. No, I can go with you now. Uh... He stole a quick glance at his 3DP, and I chuckled, understanding his hesitation. <laughs> go save. I can wait. <laughs> Luckily, it only took a few moments, and we both headed for the outdoor kitchen. Mm, about... No, never mind. What is it? Oh, uh, uh, uh. are you are you free? Are you free right now? Cause I might be interested. Him. Uh, are you currently dating him? Who? I uttered my blunt response before I even registered the question. Ah, uh, uh, as you can tell, no, we're not. We broke up quite a while ago. I'm sorry for asking. Oh, don't worry about it, and stop apologizing for everything, darn it. What a face. I elbowed his arm playfully, and he responded with a smile. That little talk seemed to have cheered him up immensely. Aw, I'm glad. I'm gonna feel bad now, though, every time we, we have that scene and we don't look for Shoji. The only reason, like, he... Gosh, what I'm trying to say is he freaks out about it every time. But this is the only time we go and actually cheer him up after the fact, because we noticed he wasn't there. Although, I guess Kyler will go and talk to him. I hope Kyler cheered him up in the other, the other routes. <laughs> I climbed up both ladders, intending to go outside for a break. Hey! I followed the industrial catwalk and noticed Shoji to my right. His square was next to the path, and he had to be mindful of where he placed his buckets. Noticing he was excavating in a rather circular lair, I stopped to re-examine the situation. He dug into an abandoned burrow, and with no indication that he acknowledged its presence. If Augustan spotted that... Shoji? 
Hello, Mel Melissa. Need something? Um, yeah. How to word this? You failed a spot check, Shoji. What? He worryingly looked at his square, and I leaned over to gesture to the borrow. You're digging into a terrier. It's this. I gently traced it with a finger. How did I miss it? I'm usually good at distinguishing colors. Man, it's so weird without mu music. Hold on. I'm going to try saving and then loading. No. Still no music. Weird. Oh, he removed his glasses and used the hem of his shirt to clean them. Um, when you come across a burrow, what do you do? Uh, you treat it like a separate layer to avoid mixing. The sediments were already muddled thanks to the badgers, so you can place the contents into another bucket, along with a document to identify it. While he adjusted his, gla his glasses, I glanced behind us, looking at the wooden post with a heat lamp clamped to its side. When was the last time you moved it? Um, not recently. I thought that it was in a convenient spot. It's a nice angle, but the light will eventually bleach the exposed layers, and it all looked the same to you. Here. I tried to remove the clamp, but all I could do was jiggle it around awkwardly. Wow, this is a pain. Noticing my frustration, Shoji stood up and extended an arm. This is one of the more difficult lamps. I got it. Using both hands, he pressed the clamp handles and removed the lamp from its post. Cautiously, he passed it over to me, and I gripped the safe portions away from the heat. Return to your usual digging spot. Let's see. While Shoji knelt down, I hovered around his shoulder, angling the lamp to highlight the vertical square. Does it stand out now? A little more to the left. Stop there. He retreated to the wooden post in the cinder block and pushed it closer to me so I could clamp the lamp in place. Or at least attempt to. Furrowing my eyebrows in concentration, I managed to wedge the clamp open enough to fix it onto the post. After some minor alterations, I glanced back to see Shoji satisfied with the new placement. Thanks for that. I'll keep the advice in mind. It's not a problem. Don't forget to adjust the lamps once in a while. Anyway, I'm heading out for a break. I can return with a bucket and a carré for the burrow if you'd like. If it's no trouble. Sounds good. See you in a bit. As I turned, I froze in the catwalk, realizing I was dangerously close to a cinder block position at the edge. There was a wooden post inserted into it with a heat lamp clasped on, angled toward the square beside Shoji's. Careful, it can be a tight fit here. No kidding. Later, Shoji. Wait, Melissa? Hmm? After exchanging looks, Shoji gazed back down at the ground, his fingers reaching for the trowel. If it's not too much trouble, when we're working at the same place... Could you see how I'm doing? Sherry's always busy, and I don't want to bother her. And Professor DuPont honestly scares me. If you make a mistake, he drills it into you for a good 20 minutes and everyone can hear it. I can see why people prefer to ask Sherry or Hendrick. If you don't mind getting advice from a fellow student who's sometimes unsure of herself... I can't promise I'll know all the answers, but I'll do my best. I can stop by to see how you're doing. Thank you. I know it's imposing, so I appreciate it. Oh, this is new. I like your explanations. They're easy to follow, and I feel more comfortable hearing it from you. Huh, I never thought I'd be good at the teaching angle. I'm happy to help. Aw, cute. And we have music again, thank goodness. Yay! What's up? Rosemarie blinked out of her trance and turned to me. Flashing a smile, she made a sweeping movement with her arm to direct my attention. Oh, trying to refit this collection? They're all pieces from the same layer, and I'm trying to connect them. That sounds difficult. There's easily hundreds right here. Think of it as getting a box of pieces from different jigsaw puzzles. They don't tell you how many pieces are missing, or how many puzzles they're from. And no pictures to help, either. It's a huge accomplishment even to pair up one. And now I'm forbidden to use glue. Bah! Yeah, I did hear a snippet of it. It seems both Augustan and Hendrik don't like it when the collections get fiddled with. Ugh. Agitated, she slammed both hands on the table. They disapprove of removing anything from their precious order. Everything must remain in its properly recorded place and stored away. They pay more attention to context and the microstratigraphy than actively putting the pieces together. 
I feel like I'm the only one who wants to learn about the Neanderthals. Ugh, oh, the so, so bone-headed. No, more like rock-headed. Forgive me for resorting to one of Hendrick's puns. Anyway, I'm the one who studies all of the technology. I even craft my own tools and weapons here to demonstrate. If you'd like, feel free to help me. Seeing it up close is fascinating. Just watch yourself. Many of the blades and edges are still sharp like new. Sure. I pulled up a chair focusing on the nearest pieces. So these are all from Colin Cave? Of course. Every single one documented and accounted for. If a flint was found in the wet screening, though, it'll be missing some coordinates. The variety was stunning, from small flaked pieces to others that resembled axes or thin knives. I picked up one and brought it to her attention. How were they able to accomplish this exactly? Sherry did lecture to me about it, but... It was mostly sketch diagrams of the final product and not the process. It depends on what they were planning to do with it. For example, make a reclaw, axe, point. The one you're holding is a reclaw, also called a scraper. You can see it was beautifully retouched by pressure flaking at its edge here. They'd use a burin, uh, think of it like a chisel with a pointed end, and apply force until it snapped a flake off. Good for finer details and to resharpen tools. Neanderthals were clever. They knew how to get long use out of their tools, and they had more control than the previous stone tool industries. And... this one? I picked it up. The stone had an odd bulb near the end, followed by ripples along its surfaces. It reminded me of a shell. That's a conchoidal flake. It could be retouched into a tool if needed. It was easier to carry lightweight flakes than large intact rocks. This was done by percussion flaking. Basically, they used a hammerstone to strike it at a precise angle to break flakes off, causing the rippling pattern. We placed the objects down and Rosemary tapped one of the bigger stones in the center of the box. This scarred thing in the middle is a quartzite core. Quartzite is extremely hard to nap, but if material was limited, they would use it. Now I need to find the tertiary flakes to fit to it. Tertiary? Flakes from the interior part of the rock. Think of the core as the yolk of an egg, the tertiary flakes as the white part, and the outer flakes, called primary and secondary, as pieces of the shell. I'm following how the Neanderthals nap the tools in reverse, step by step. I know the terminology can be a little... overwhelming. Right now it's more important to be able to identify them when you're digging. This quartzite is actually from an old Muse River deposit a few kilometers from here. Hendrik and I published a few papers on material sources. Higher quality material like flint and chert would be carried for even longer distances. Dear me, I'm blathering on like some cartoon owl from a kid's show. If you'd like, I can show you some of the stuff Hendrik and I published together. It'll give you more insight regarding Kalen's history. Really? I'd love to see it if you could email or print it off. I was odd that they had published works, but now that I thought about it, they probably published updates or findings related to Kalen Cave. It sounds like you and Hendrik have worked a lot together. We attended the same university, and we went to similar classes. Obviously published some papers together, too. Um... I hesitated, but decided to be frank about it. It'd been nagging at the back of my mind for a while. Are you and Hendrik... a couple? Uh, what? Where did you get that idea? <laughs> nine, nine, nine! Don't get me wrong. I love and adore Hendrik, but as a friend, I'm not attracted to men in that way either. Anyway, about the papers. I'll talk to Hendrik about it, since I know he'll have them on hand or in digital format. Why is my name being mentioned? Oh, Hen, speak of the devil. Melissa and I were discussing sharing our published works with her. Oh, not those. They're all badly worded gibberish with convoluted sentences in an attempt to sound mastery smart. You are over-exaggerating. And they're, uh, in French. Some are published in English. You know, I don't have to look at them if you don't want me to. I'm satisfied with my recent work, so I don't mind sharing those with you. His first published work could be boiled down to, gee, these 60 million year old mountains sure haven't changed much in 60 million years. I had to pick something, and it was still time consuming compiling all that data, 
Miss, gee, these Neanderthals prefer to use local napping material. She pouted then, ahem, to change the subject. I'll gather the newest articles. The ones written by Rosemary and me cover locations of material used for napping, while the ones I've collaborated on with my uncle explain the stratigraphy of Calan. Sounds good. It'll give me something to read over the weekend. Hendrik glanced over the collection on the table. I'm guessing Rosemary finally gave you one of her spiels? I hope it made up for missing out on the presentation earlier. True. Augustan had decided it was easier to explain Stone Tools himself since there was only one English-speaking student present. Yep, it was pretty interesting. Must have been since everyone left ten minutes ago. Sherry was looking for you. What? I glanced at the wall clock. Yeep, thanks for the reminder. Later, Melissa. And thanks again for the talk, Rosemary. You're a wonderful lady.